Welcome to Abundant Life Christian Fellowship. We're so glad you've joined us for today's message. Let's dive in. Sunday. So, um, <laughs> um, so I want to make sure that you understand what we're doing on a Sunday like this. Um, one of the things we take extra effort in doing is making sure each individual that is getting baptized understands why they are getting baptized, what it means. And so I want to help you understand as well. And the, the first thing I want to tell you is that Christianity is different than any other religion in the world. And there's a major difference between Christianity and the rest of the world views that you can encounter. Um, one, one example I can use or an, an analogy we can use is think about college. You go to college and that puts you on the path of getting a degree. And so you're on the path, you're taking the coursework, you have professors that are helping you along the way, but nobody can tell you for sure whether you're going to get a degree or not. Because at the end of that coursework, there are final exams, right? And you got to pass those exams. This is kind of like judgment day. You got to pass these exams if you're going to get a degree. And so along the way, as you're journeying and you're putting work into it, you don't know what, how it's going to turn out, right? That's how the world religions operate. It, they are based on merit. It is you you know, have some initiation kind of ceremony or thing that puts you on the path. You do good works. And then at the, at the end, there's the scales of justice. And will you pass the, the final test when judgment comes? I don't know, right? Hopefully somehow your good works outweigh your, your bad works. That's how the world religions work and function. Christianity is so different hear this. This is how Christianity operates. You start with acceptance that's based on a relationship. Acceptance based on a relationship with Jesus. And so you, when you place your, your trust in Jesus, you have declared over you, hey, you are accepted by God. You are worthy to be in a relationship with him. And it's all based on what Jesus has done for you. It's based on his performance record. It's based on his death for you. It is all based on his merit, not yours. And so you don't have to wonder, well, will I pass the final judgment or test? When you come to faith in Jesus and you receive his radical grace, and you receive what he's done through his life, death, and resurrection on your behalf, you can know today immediately that when it comes time for judgment, God is going to look at you and say, welcome in to the kingdom I prepared for you. Not guilty, because Christ's righteousness will cover you in that situation. You see, Christianity is so radically different. It's not about us earning our way up to God, climbing our way up the ladder to reach to God. No, it is about a God who came down the ladder in Jesus Christ, entered in our brokenness, our mess, to raise us up by his power, not our own merit, not our own power. Do you see the difference? I say this because I am constantly talking to people that think acceptance by God is based on their own work, their own merit. Christianity is different. You see, the people today that are getting baptized, they have come to understand, oh my goodness, there's no way I could have earned my way up to God. There's no way I could have made myself good enough. I am deeply flawed and broken, but I don't have to. Jesus has done what was required for me to be accepted by God now and forever. And so the people that are getting baptized today, are they getting baptized so that God will accept them? No. They're getting baptized because God in Christ has already accepted them. And they want to, as an act of devotion to God, as a, as a way of loving him back, as a way of marking their journey with Jesus, they have come to get baptized. So Christianity operates, I'm accepted, therefore I obey. World religions operate, I obey, therefore I'm accepted. No. 
We are accepted, therefore we obey. We want to obey, obey. That's our motivation to love Jesus back. So when we put the person down in the waters of baptism, what does this symbolize? It symbolizes that a person's life, separate from God, being their own master, doing their own thing apart from God, all their sin in the, in the, in the debt that their sin has incurred, that's all dead. It's been crucified. It's been buried. It's been put out of this world. And when we raise somebody up through the water of baptism, it is symbolizing that they, just like Jesus came out of the tomb, when they're united to Christ through faith, they have been raised to new life. Remember last Sunday, if you were here, as we celebrated Jesus' resurrection, we talked about how Jesus' resurrection, it, uh, it, it's the beginning of future resurrection. It's the first fruits. Resurrection has three phases. First, Jesus' body is bodily raised. The second stage of resurrection is now, and we're seeing it with these people that are getting baptized, the Holy Spirit has been placed in them and they are being raised to life internally. Meaning they have a new heart, they have a new power, they have new desires, they have new preferences, they have a new vision for the future, a new purpose, a new family. All these things inwardly have become new for them. And then the third stage of resurrection is when Jesus returns and he makes all things new and he raises to bodily life those who have fallen asleep in him. And so people getting baptized today can look forward to future resurrection. They will be living with the resurrected body in the resurrected world with the resurrected Jesus. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Go ahead and show the graphic. So here, here are some other reasons why a person gets baptized. So we talked about it paints a picture, right? We covered that. Um, they're united with Jesus in his death and resurrection. It marks the journey. So it's good for people to get baptized because it's a way for them to put a stake in the ground, a really important marker in their journey that they have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, Okay. It encourages others. That's why we, get, why we are baptized, because it encourages others. I know that each individual that's getting baptized today, and I, one of the best parts of my job, here, here's one of the best parts by far, is I get a front row seat to God's work in the lives of people. It's probably, I mean, it's one of the best parts of my job. And you're going to get the cliff notes and I, when I was watching the videos, we baptized three people in the first service. I just, I'm, I'm watching these videos. I'm just like, man, I wish everybody in this room could hear the full story because there's so much more to it. And God is so good and he's so powerful and he works in such miraculous ways. I want everybody to hear it, right? And I'm gonna feel the same way when I watch these videos. No matter how good these individuals did on the video, which I'm sure they did great, Oh, there's so much more there. But when I watch these uh, videos and when I talk to these people, it encourages me in my faith. Why? Because God is still on the move. He's still transforming people. An uprising that we've been focused on and been talking about is taking shape in this church. People's lives are being radically transformed. It is amazing. You know what else it does, a baptism does? For those of you, so it not only encourages people, it challenges people because Chances are there are people here that are far from Jesus. And I want you to know you're welcome here. We want you to be here. We want you to belong before you believe. You're free just to belong. You're free to ask questions. You're free to wrestle with doubts and, and you know, how, how does this work? And we want to help you. This is a place for you to explore Jesus, right? But it's also a challenge to you that um, where do you stand with God? And what happens when you die? What does your future look like? And so it's a challenge to you to really consider Jesus, who he is. What are you putting your trust in right now for meaning and satisfaction and significance and security? Is it really delivering? Is it really bringing what your heart longs for? You see, it's, 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 a, it's a time for you to assess kind of where you're at. And so it's a challenge to you. And our hope is that you would see your need for Jesus as your Savior, that you would see that you have a God-shaped hole in your heart that only God can fill. And no matter what you try and put in there, it's not going to deliver like you hope it would, you know, it will deliver. I've seen it too many times. 
Baptism identifies you with God's family. That's another reason why we baptize individuals here in this church. We don't do it privately in their home with just their immediate family. Part of baptism is saying yes to Jesus, but it's also saying yes to his family, the church. We need each other. Life is so stinking hard. Amen? It is so hard. It is so hard. And just when you think you might have figured it out, bam, another tragedy, right? Another heartache, another problem. Life is too hard. Life is especially hard when you're doing it going alone. We need each other. God has made us for community. You know, these people that are getting baptized this morning, I need them to grow up to maturity in Christ. I need them. I need what God has placed in them to become all that God created me to be. And guess what? They need what God has placed in me. We need each other. Iron sharpens iron, right? We need the support of each other. We need the accountability of one another. It's the only way we'll become all that God designs us to be. The most, one of the most important pieces to this, and it's not on the graphic, but another reason why people get baptized is simple obedience to Jesus' command to be baptized. Matthew 28 talks about as he's sending his church on mission, hey, I want you to go. I want you to make disciples. I want you to baptize individuals in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, right? So these individuals that are getting baptized, they're just obeying what Jesus has commanded them to do. Not to earn God's acceptance because they already have it and they want to love God back, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, one thing I will tell you is we've had spontaneous baptisms in the past where people who have gotten baptized um, weren't planning on getting baptized. They come here, God starts doing heart surgery on their heart in the very moment of the service. It could be happening here. And he's calling you to himself and he's calling you to repent and believe in him. And you just heard the gospel that, oh my goodness, good news. I don't have to merit my salvation. I can receive it as a radical free gift of grace. Oh my goodness, Jesus, I want it. Here I am, right? That could be happening to you. If it's happening to you right now, hey, you can get baptized today. And who cares that you're in jeans and you're going to be wet and you don't have a change of clothes? Jesus died on a cross for you. You can get uncomfortable for a few minutes. We have extra towels available. So I encourage you, if God is moving on your heart right now, come, be baptized. Jim, our, one of our elders, he's going to be in the conference room during the last song. Go talk to him. We will make it happen today. Don't delay. Don't, don't resist. Don't resist. Let's pray, and then I'll introduce you to these individuals. Lord Jesus, it is such a phenomenal privilege to be able to know you, to be loved by you, and then to be used by you to see other people come to know you and be radically transformed by you. We thank you for the ways that you are working in and through this church it's every week I'm hearing a new story of how you are making dead people new and alive. And these examples that we're, we'll see today are, are case in point. They are evidence of that very fact. And as each of these individuals that you have called to yourself and have raised to life, as they make their, their faith in you public, as they... Uh, show us this beautiful symbol of uh, true reality, of resurrection that has taken shape in their life. I pray that they would sense your presence in a super powerful way. That just as you, Jesus, when you were baptized, heard from the Father, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. I pray that each of these individuals will hear and sense in their spirit that they are your beloved daughter or beloved son in whom you are well pleased. Not because they've earned it, but because Jesus has done everything for them. And because they're covered in his righteousness, you declare over them, this is my child in whom I am well pleased. May that be real to them this morning. I also pray, too, that this church body would rally around these individuals because the journey is just beginning. 
that we would give them everything that they need to grow in godliness, to become all that you have designed them to be. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for resurrection. It's in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so hey, first person we are going to introduce to you is Debbie Sterling. Um, Debbie... Uh, it has been just a joy to get to know. It's been awesome to hear how God has been working in her life. And I want you to check out a video of Debbie uh, right now. First off, I read somewhere um, where the Lord tries to get your attention in life. And um, if he doesn't get your attention, then he'll, um, he'll find a way to, to get your attention. And he may get your attention through, um, you know, a, a near death experience or um, a losing loved ones or going through a divorce or separation. And also even just um, losing everything that meant anything to you. And I know that, I know that he's um, tried to get my attention a couple times in my life and I always looked up to him um, for uh, guidance and, and comfort and he always gave it to me. And Instead of choosing to walk his path, I still walked my own. And it wasn't until 2022, when my brother passed away, that um, he got my full attention, as my brother meant a lot to me, and we were close. And I felt like I died. I, I didn't. I didn't have a zest for life anymore. And um, I gave up on myself. And it was quite a while later that I realized that I not only gave up on my life, I, I gave up on looking to, to the Lord for help. And um, I started praying really hard. And I, I just told him that um, I need your help. I can't do it without you. And you're going to be enough for me. He's changed my life totally since I, he got my attention. Um, I look at the world differently. Um, I look at it more through his eyes and I feel his spirit in my heart and soul now. And, um, I've just changed completely and it's for the better and I I just know my life's complete now with him in it and I, he's not going to leave this time. I, I'm, he's there to stay and um, he's my rock and he's my salvation. I want to be baptized because he's been so good to me. and. I just now know that I think it was a test because I I didn't look up to him when my brother died and um, when I did, my life is like full of spiritual joy now and um, I'm just happier and um, I just want to commit my life to him. I, I believe he died on the cross for my sins and um, I just don't want to walk without him anymore in my life. Debbie, you family, friends, come on up.
got it. You got it. You got it. It's pretty warm, isn't it? Yes. No. Go ahead and sit on your bottom there. It's been a joy, you know, having you here, getting to know you, hearing about God's work in your life. So super grateful that God saw fit to put you here in this church. Yeah. All right. Debbie Sterling, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death and raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Go walk in newness of life. Yep. Yeah, there you go. You did it. You did it. Excellent. Awesome. You guys can have a seat. Very good. So the, the next person we're going to get to baptize this morning is, his name is Mr. Breck Williams. Breck is nine years old. Is that right, buddy? You're only seven? <laughs> So anytime, you know, you have a seven-year-old come to you and want to get baptized, you know, as I, I, I think right away, all right, well, do they understand what they're doing, right? I want to make sure they understand. And so we were able to have a conversation in the conference room, Breck and I, and I want to tell you, this guy has a sharp mind. God has given him a gift to think and he asked so many good questions. Here was one of Breck's questions. Why did Jesus ride into Jerusalem on a donkey? I was like, wow, that's a great question. You know why? You, don't wanna, you wanna know what the answer is? This is phenomenal. It's an amazing answer. Is that kings normally would ride into cities on big, strong horses to show their might, right? Jesus, he came on a donkey to show his humility that he was going to conquer through weakness, not by military might. He was going to conquer through making himself killable. He was going to conquer by becoming uh, treated as the worst of slaves by dying on a cross. He came humbly and lowly to raise us up. Let's go. That will preach. Right? So that's why, Breck, and we got to have those conversations. And at the end of the conversation, I'm like, this, this guy gets that Jesus died for him, and he wants to live for him. Who am I to stop him from getting baptized? So, Breck, you're a cool dude. I want you all to check out this video of Breck. Because um, I wanted to be closer to him and I wanted to understand um, why he did all he came here to save our sins. So I can be closer to God and Jesus and I can understand more about them and I know more about them and I can or knowledge. Yeah. Was that it? All right, cool. Brett, come on up. Family, friends, come on up. Let's give them a warm, abundant life welcome. So I got Breck here, and his dad, Cody, is going to help me. But Breck, it's been awesome getting to know you just a little bit that I've been able to. And I can't wait to see how God's going to use you and the brain he's given you to think. Are you ready, Breck? Breck Williams, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death and raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Go walk in newness of life.
Awesome job. Next up, we have Mr. Ken Curzon. Uh, Ken is such a special man. You see him uh, greeting you when you come into our church, and he has faithfully served here for quite some time. Uh, Ken is the brother Jim, one of our elders, and he is the brother of Roger Curzon, the founding pastor of this church. And so super cool to have Ken uh, taking this step with us today. Let's check out a video of Ken. Um, see, uh, the, la the last couple of, couple of years have been really, really tough. And uh, I just want to... Um, be known as being one of his. Uh, I'm uh, a lot more um, outgoing and um, I'm a lot more at, at peace than I have been in a long time. Uh, because I want to be, uh, because uh, I believe that Jesus died for me, and um, I want to be known as one of his. Very cool. Ken, let's have you come on up. Family and friends, come on up. As Ken gets ready, one of the things I, I'll say too is, you know, a big reason as to why we get to uh, experience the fruit that, that God is giving us right now is because of people like Roger, who uh, worked for many, many years here and served here, and other people like Roger that have created such a fantastic foundation for us to build off of. Um, so just know there, there are people that have come before us that put in a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that God used to bring our church to where it is today. You're good, you're good. All right, Ken Curzon, uh, we baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death and raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Go and walk in newness of life. You did it. <laughs> you got it. So uh, the, the next two that we get to baptize are Austin and Victoria Hollis. We'll, we'll start with Austin's on my list first. So we'll, we'll start with Austin. But uh, do you know, you probably don't, they drive from Minerva to come here? Wow. So hey, you guys don't have any excuses for not coming on a Sunday morning, right? And you know that some parents are driving from Louisville to be here? So it's just cool how God is working and moving. Um, but Austin and Victoria recently got connected to our church through Drew, who uh, plays the drums for us. And I am just getting to know them, but Austin was already serving at our youth night um, that we had at uh, high school in Maslin. He was serving already, and their story is really cool of how God has brought redemption to them, and I can't wait for you to get to know them more as time goes on. So let's have them come to, well, let's have them, let's watch a video of Austin, and then we can play the one of Victoria even after that. Um... 
always had some sort of faith until recent traumatic events happened in my life that kind of gave me the push towards him. Felt like the it was a pull towards God and Jesus that I can't explain. Words can't I can't put it in words. Um, I've never been never seen true joy in the world until I've actually opened my eyes fully to be able to see, you know, the beauty that life offers everybody, not just me in general, but my kids, my wife, my family, and my friends. I see it as a symbol of a new living, um, washing away the sins from the past, the fresh start in life. Uh, that's why it's being called Born Again. I was raised in the church and I've always been um, a Christian and I've always known the word, um, but some stuff happened when I was a teenager that kind of separated me from God. Um, and I always knew the word, but I kind of was like a Sunday Christian um, and I wasn't living by it. And then some things recently happened that kind of flipped my world upside down. Um, and the first thing that we did was we prayed. And that's something that Austin and I have done together over the last couple months and so we have just gone full force faith in God. Um, one of the things I've always done is I've always been a caretaker. Um, I've always worried about everybody else, um, which is just part of my nature. It's just what I do. Um, but I'm learning to do that through him now. Um, so finding myself as a person through him and then through that I can be a better wife and be a better mom and a sister and but I needed to find who I was first as a person and so that's something that I've been working on with God um, about finding out who I am. Um, I can I want a clean slate um, so for me when I go under um, it's going to be leaving all the things that old Victoria did and said and my reactions. And when I come up, it's going to be brand new. I'm going to be more Christ-like than I've ever been before. So it's kind of a restart for me. All right. Let's have Austin and Victoria come on up. Family and friends, come on up. And I actually think ladies should go first. So, Austin, are you willing to help me? Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I'm about to turn the heater on. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, Justin Shackle, he's been uh, doing ice plunges every morning, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, not they're not my nice. thing either. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Victoria, so glad you're here. So so glad God has brought you here. He loves you so much. So, Victoria Hollis, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death and raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Go and walk in newness of life. Go ahead and have a seat there. You can help it's me out? Fine. I'm just a mom. Yes. <laughs> Austin Hollis, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death and raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Go and walk in newness of life. As they make their way back to their seats, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for what we have been able to witness. Thank you that you are the God of new beginnings, fresh starts, new creation. And that no matter how deeply our sin runs, and our brokenness, and our heartache runs, 
Your grace runs deeper still. Your mercy runs deeper still. Your power to resurrect runs deeper still. Thank you for these individuals' lives. We look forward to how you're going to utilize them to bring hope and resurrection to other people. We pray for your blessing upon them. Bless and keep them. Protect them. Use them. And may you use us to empower them. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's teaching. Make sure to click subscribe for the latest sermons. You can find more information about Abundant Life Christian Fellowship and our upcoming events by going to alcfohio.org. Again, that's alcfohio.org. You can also stay connected with us on Facebook and YouTube. We hope you have a great day.